Welcome to Shooting Straight. I'm Aaron, and with me is Todd Nanny. How's everyone doing? Good. Hi. Are we stir crazy yet? Sitting at home through this COVID thing? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. We're getting close. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I like cool. it. <laughs> Well, you know, this is our uh, third episode this season and our second one we're doing remotely. Um, but I hope everyone loved the last episode. We talked a lot about uh, handguns, how to choose the right handgun, a lot of great conversation, a lot of good learning points. And um, but before we dive in, as always, Todd, take us through our safety. Firearms are zipped or loaded. Number two, keep your finger off the trigger to your sights aligned. You made that conscious decision to shoot. Number three, never allow your muzzle to cover anything you're not willing to destroy. And number four, the one that gets violated a lot, always be aware of your target, its background, and its foreground. Remember that when you're shooting in BLM land or something like that, just because you hit the paper or you hit the steel, well, it does not stop. It still goes someplace else. We don't need it to go launching into neighborhoods or into somebody else's camp. All yeah. right? Remember that stuff. Yeah, that's great. And I know Todd and I were out shooting a few weeks ago out on BLM land and there were ATVs going back and forth and we'd have to stop shooting and wait for them to go past. Yeah. So, so public land can be uh, difficult sometimes. Where, what's um, going on around you on public lands? Yeah, yeah, cool. So let's take a little break and then we'll get right back into our topic. So stay with us. Welcome back to Shooting Straight. You know, on our last episode, we spoke about handgun selection, how to choose a proper handgun for, you know, your first gun. Um, but having a handgun is just the beginning of the process, especially if you're going to start carrying concealed. So today we're going to talk about different holsters, uh, different attire, things that pretty much you need to consider when you've decided now to carry concealed. I mean, I know for me, when I first started carrying concealed uh, 25, 30 years ago, it was a completely different attire change, uh, especially if you're going to be carrying in the waistband. You know, you're going to be going up a couple sizes, different belts. But you know, we'll get into that. And so, the first thing we'll talk about is attire. Todd, what do you think? Me, I, I basically have like a uniform of the day, and it's uh, it's usually some form of a, either a t-shirt or um, a polo shirt. But then I also um, I'm Pretty much my daily wear is a BDU type pant. Um, so I have pockets floor. Um, the waistband is stretchy per se. Um, so it can accommodate me having inside the waistband, outside the waistband. You know, it just kind of depends. And then all my t-shirts or the shirts that I wear, I make sure that if I'm going to be carrying a firearm, it's loose enough where it doesn't print and doesn't show that, hey, there's a firearm there or it's not so tight that you can sit there and make out the handle of the firearm and everything else. It gets, yeah. yeah. But when I see that, I just kind of giggle and I walk up to people and I just touch it and go, hey, you might want to get that a little looser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, printing really, it's the first, the first rule of carrying concealed is making sure people don't know you're carrying because it kind of defeats the purpose of concealed carry. Yeah. What, what about what about you, Annie? How, how, what have you found are some of the options that help? Um, well, being, you know, a mom and all the various roles that I have throughout the day, I don't have a specific uniform other than, I mean, it does vary. So I have a holster for pants, for like jeans. I have something that I just got to wear underneath overalls and with jumpsuits cause, and sweats. Um, running is a whole different thing. Um, so I just, I have a bunch of different types that I carry my gun and depending on where I'm going for the day. Yeah. I mean, there's, um, there are a lot of different styles of uh, holsters. Of, yeah. And I think everyone who starts carrying at some point, you're going to end up with a huge Tupperware bin <laughs> full of holsters. I think everyone does. I mean, I've got a huge one right here next to me yes. and, uh, you know, and like you mentioned, there's different kinds of um, attire. You know, you're going to have dress wear. You're going to have mm -hmm. sports wear. You're going to have casual wear. And, you know, it's a little bit easier when you have the uniform of the day, which is, sim is similar, you know, day after day. But even then, you know, summer is different. Win oh, yeah. Winter's awesome for carrying because you can carry whatever you want. No one's going to see it. But uh, 
summer, that's a whole nother story. And so we're going to talk a bit about different types of holsters and kind of like with handguns, it, it comes down to some personal preference. You know, what's comfortable for you because your body type may be different than somebody else's. And so really you're going to start trying different styles of holsters. Some will work, some won't, but, um, Regardless of what style host, holster that you're that you're using, you've got to make sure you're proficient with it. So, do, do you guys want to take us through some of the styles of holsters that you found? One of the first things that I do whenever I get a new holster, um, I check it with different clothes that I wear. You know, I know for a fact that at least sometime during the week I'm going to be wearing a suit. Um, I'm, I know I'm going to be wearing my BDU pants, so that's the first thing that I'll check with it, and then. You know, I'll I'll bend over, I'll squat, I'll reach up, you know, reach up like I'm grabbing something at a store or something like that, because that can expose your firearm. And, you know, the whole purpose of being concealed is being concealed. Don't let people know that you actually have it. Um, you know, so that's one of the first things that I'll check anytime I get a, a new gun or a new a new holster. I'll go through and just just kind of run myself, my body through the different motions that I could be uh, doing bend over, pick something up that dropped on the ground, tie your shoes. Okay. That's, I mean, that's, that's a pretty normal thing for people to do. You know, and I, I know, Annie, you and I have talked uh, off camera quite a bit about different things. What, uh, you know, for ladies, it's totally different because your apparel changes so dramatically and yes. there's so many different ways that you have to conceal. Kind of tell me what it is that works best uh, for, for the gals out there. Um, well, for me, it's all kid friendly. And I know lots of guys like to carry, can still carry on their back or their hips, but I need both my hip in case I need a kid on each um, side or something like that. And another thing with kids is um, I do not want them to know I have one on if I go into, you know, the whole printing thing. I go into a grade school. I don't want them to see it. I don't want my kids to know I'm carrying um, just for safety reasons, right? But so the thing that I have found that works the best, and I'm going to stand up and I'm going to show you, but it's this new belly band that I found off of Etsy. And I carry a Glock 19. And so it fits perfect on one side. And I have a mag on my other side um, for spare. And it has been great under dresses. Um, like I said, oh, nice. overalls. Okay, I'm going to stand up. And I am wearing my patriotic gear because it is Red Friday, but you'll still be able to see it. But anyway, it's kind of like a, a girdle. And it just has these little loops right here. It's really tight around my waist, which is great for women to, you know, suck us in, right? <laughs> It's like a holster and spanks in one. It's like a, yeah. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> yeah. But it's very easy to access my my Glock, which I don't have a mag in, just so you know, safety. But um, anyway, it just goes right in here on this side. And then here's a pocket for my extra mag. And I love it. I can, another good thing is when you're in the car, you know, for me, I don't want anything against my back because it bugs me when I'm driving around doing um, carpool a lot. So that, this one is amazing. Um, can I show you guys another one? I have yeah, another sure. one. Um, a purse is a great one. Um, I know the best thing when you can still carry is to have it on you as a, on your person but sometimes it you can't or whatever reason. Anyway, I found this purse and it is specific for concealed carry. There is a pocket back here. Okay. And that's cool. The nice. I know Aaron, you should carry some of these in your in yeah. your store or your wife's That'd be store. Cool. <gasps> My wife's store, I should. Yes, you should. That'd be so cool. Um, anyway, it's tight. Like it's taking me a second to get it out, which is good. This is my husband's clock. 19x so you know it's a bigger gun but it fit perfect um because anything any bag any sort of concealed carry that you don't have on you you want it tight so it's not bouncing around like in a diaper bag don't just throw your block in yeah. there because you don't want it bouncing around anyway yeah. 
So those are a couple of my my favorites that I use. Yeah. I have more, but yeah. So you know, there's different styles of holsters that people you know choose, especially. A lot of times um, people will skimp, they'll, they'll buy a nice gun and they'll skimp on a holster. So there's little, little different styles. Let me kind of show you a couple here I have. I mean, you're gonna have, you know, there's, there's leather holsters. And really when you're choosing a holster, you wanna make sure that the holster that you're buying is for that specific style handgun. Because what'll happen is if you're using a generic holster, it's not gonna retain it very well because it's made to fit multiple styles and models of guns. So you're gonna want something with, um, you know, not necessarily, you know, a leather boned holster like this, but you can also do like a plastic holster where it'll clip in with the hand guard. Mm -hmm. so, so make sure it is, it is specific for the handgun that you are buying. And one thing that's nice about these um, is they actually stay open as well. If you get one of those floppy, you know, generic holsters, what'll happen is when you draw that gun out, it will close and you're going to possibly need to only holster using your strong hand or your, or your weak hand. And you won't be able to reach over with your other hand. So make sure you're going to get a holster that stays open. So, so don't skimp on the holsters. And also you want a holster possibly for your first style of holster that you're going to carry is something with at least one form of retention. So whether it's a strap or a clip or something that's going to hold it in, especially if you're going to be physically active. So that way it doesn't fall out. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, Todd, when you were, when you were an officer and you were concealed carrying, what, what kind of holsters did you guys use? Part right, we were running uh, inside the waistband stuff. Um, you know, like for, for us, you know, it, it was a little different thing. We we always had to have them readily available. Um, but like, you know, I always tell my officers, make sure it's a good quality holster. Don't spend the $12 on the Uncle Mike's, you know, no yeah. ding on Uncle Mike's, but don't spend the $12 on, on a holster when you just spend $500 on a, on a really nice gun. You yeah. know, um, it's... And I see it all the time, especially in classes, you know, people will buy a, a cheap holster and they're fighting their equipment all the time, just trying to reholster the guns. Like, okay, yeah. if you would have spent $10 more, you'd have gotten a much better piece of equipment, you know? Um, yeah. The, uh, like you had already alluded to, um, if you have to reholster your gun, you need to be able to do it with one hand because you may be holding somebody um, at bay. You need, may need to be talking on the phone or calling 911. Um, or you may be uh, putting pressure on a wound of a person who's been injured. You know, So that's just some things to think about. And getting that gun back in the holster, that's mm -hmm. having it constantly stay open. And another reason why I like Tidex holsters. You know, yeah. I've got one of my old... Um, holsters that I used to use uh, at work. And the good thing about this holster is, yeah, it's all boned in shape to fit the gun, but it collapses down. Like if I get that off of there, you can see how much thinner it became without the gun in it. So, mm -hmm. you know, just some things to think about when, uh, when you're looking at your specific holster. Um, yeah. You um, know, what, go ahead, go ahead, Annie. Oh, I was going to say, another one that I like is this one for appendix carry. Yes. Um, it's a tier one concealed carry holster, and it... Hold it up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Can you oh. see it now? A little bit better? Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so there's a spot for my mag. Again, my extra mag, my Glock, and then these clips right here, they just fit right over my pants. So when I wear jeans, this is the one I use. Mm -hmm. um, again. And it is so, it Can is. you flip so, it around? Oh, yeah. I want to see, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's see the inside yep. of that. Yep. So that's okay. what will be against me. So it's yeah. nice and smooth. Um, anyway, yeah. and, I, and it does, it just, it's the best one I've found to go in my jeans. I, again, appendix carry is great for mm. me as a woman because it leaves my hips available. Um, mm. It's just in yeah. a good spot right there. <laughs> Yeah. And it does, it comes, like you were saying, Todd, it comes 
in and out just yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love it. It's a good, it's a good one. Yeah. Then, you know, yeah. you know, we talked about, um, you know, making sure that the holster retains the weapon. Mm -hmm. We also got to make sure that your body retains the holster. Yes. So you, yes. So you, so you got to make sure that it's got a decent clip or even a belt loop, something that's going to be a really positive retention because, you know, you worry about losing the gun. You don't want to lose the whole, the whole package. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, like, yes. I've got there you this go. one here. Yeah. Um, you can see the yes, clips same. here. They actually clip a hold of the actual, uh, your belt, you know, and donuts. Got to like donuts. Who doesn't like donuts? Mm -hmm. But then, like another holster that I have, um, it has actual straps that you undo and snap around your belt, and the yeah. belt loop actually yeah. goes in the middle of here. So oh. this is the portion that's actually up against your body, and then this is outside. The only thing that they'll actually see is the butt of the gun, and then these straps. So mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier to conceal, especially if you're reaching up. It, you know, your pants are going to show right here versus having the gun and the holster be seen uh, as you're reaching up and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, this, when I first this. started to carry, my husband got me a belt. And if you guys can see that, it's just a Boy Scouts of America belt. But one thing that's good um, for ones for... Um, that you need a belt with, you need a good quality belt, not a flimsy belt that will keep your holster right next to you. Anyway, these are like seven bucks, but it's a good, it's a good quality belt for a holster. Yeah. So nothing it needs bad. to be rigid enough to actually support the, yeah. the weight. And the bigger the gun, the more rigid the holster actually has to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, that's one of the reasons I use full grain leather uh, belts from uh, Mean Gene Leather. They're, I mean, they're just awesome, awesome belts. You yeah. pay a little bit of a premium, but they're, they're well worth anything like that. I mean, it's, it definitely makes a difference to have good quality equipment. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about the equipment here in our in our next segment. Um, I just wanted to show you one other retention. Um, this is a Galco holster. It's actually made for deep concealment to where this actually goes down on the inside of your belt. So you can kind of try and tuck down a little bit. This one actually works pretty well. This is for uh, my Glock 26, which there's actually better options now to carry that that many rounds of nine. But, yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the holsters that I, that I use is this one here uh, for my appendix carry stuff, but you'll see this area right there. That's where you tuck your shirt in. Oh. So your shirt actually tucks down inside there. So the, really the only thing that you're going to see are these two little belt loops hanging out there. So Perfect. it makes Perfect. it real easy to conceal and it, you can have your shirt tucked in. So you know, depending on the environment that you're going into, having your shirt, your shirt tucked in is a yeah. necessity, you know, yeah. or if you can untuck it, then great. Yeah. You know, we've, we've spoken mostly about uh, belt or mid body carry. And just, I want to touch really quick on other types of holsters because there's plenty of types. There's, um, you know, there's shoulders holsters, there's ankle holsters. There's a lot of different styles. There's these undershirt holsters, which are similar to the belly bands. Oh like yeah, you can, you can carry it up underneath your um, your armpit. These are really specialty type holsters that are for specific purposes. Like if you're a driver, you know something like this is going to be more comfortable for you because you're not trying to reach down behind you when you're sitting in a seat. Um, ankle holsters. That's a very deep, deep concealment type. So if you're going to be wanting to access your your weapon quickly, that's probably not a good option but it could be based on what you're wearing, the only option. So, you know, what's the same? It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So if you've got to carry on your ankle, you've got to carry on your ankle. And there's a lot of great, great uh, ankle carry holsters, which I actually, I know, Todd, you don't like the 380, but I do carry a 380 pretty often on my ankle. <laughs> so, but it's, it's a great gun. I can hit with it. So, right. Yeah. Um, it's better to hit a couple times with 380 than miss a few times with a nine. <laughs> very true it's always yeah. count better than misses <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so i mean there's a lot of things to consider about holsters um but in our next segment we're going to we'll talk about some more of the accessories so as you can see there's a lot of things to consider so we'll be right back coming up on shooting straight
Welcome back to Shooting Straight. Now that we've figured out how and where we're going to carry our handgun, there's a lot more other items that we need to talk about. Um, magazines. That's your number one accessory for a handgun, right? If you're carrying a semi-auto handgun or even a revolver handgun, you need to have some spare ammunition somewhere on your body. You know, there's there's all kinds of different options. You know, you can have a magazine pouch, you could have uh, speed loaders, you can take all that stuff and put it in your pocket. That's you know, that's one of those things. But you've got to train with it that way. If you don't train with it that way, you're you know, if you're drawn from your pocket, make sure that pocket's in the same place every single time. Otherwise. You may re be reaching for something that's not there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uh, holster sets that you can purchase. Like I know when I used to shoot IDPA, I bought a Blade Tech kit that actually it came with the holster and the matching magazine um, holster as well. But it, you don't always have to have a matching set. Sometimes you want maybe a leather, you know, pistol holster, but then your magazine holsters you're going to be Kydex. I mean, there's a lot of different options. You can mix and match, whatever works. Well, for you, I mean, and like for Annie with the, the changing of apparel, you know, it's it goes back and forth, I'm sure. I mean, enlighten me if I'm wrong. But. Yes, it does. <laughs> Lots of times my extra mags just might be in my pocket. Like I don't have a spare place to put another mag, but just in my pocket, but at least it's there. And I do train with it in my pocket. I know where it's at. Yeah. But. You know, there's some, there's some uh, hard cases. Uh, this is an external belt holster for a single stack mag. I seem to, I find that I carry a lot in the waistband for my pistol, but then I'll carry on the opposite side, my magazines externally. That's why I usually go Kydex or plastic for my mags, but leather on the inside because it touches my skin. Yeah. Do you set up your spare ammunition so that it goes uh, to the opposite side of uh, where you're uh, carrying the firearm? So if you're a right-handed shooter, then pistol goes on the right-hand uh, side, and then your spare magazines or your spare ammunition go on your left, your left side. Yeah, yeah. And um, in a future episode, when we talk about technique, we'll talk about you know how to index with your finger, how to how to reload without looking, because you don't you don't want to take your eyes off what you're aiming at. You know, like one of my everyday carries is this here, an LDS concealment rampart and magazine. They both have the same, the same Kydex and everything, but you know, the one that I'm wearing today, it's a black holster with a with a tan magazine pouch. It's like, <laughs> okay, whatever. You know, my wife gives me a hard time. They don't match. You shouldn't be doing that. I don't care. Nobody's going to see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, we, we touched on belts too a little earlier. Here's some belts. Here's a couple different examples. You know, Todd mentioned the, the leather belts. Uh, this is a really thick leather belt. It'll support the full weight of the handgun because you don't want your pants hanging down. Because even though you might not be printing, you're always reaching back and pulling up on your pants. I mean, that's a yeah. sure sign that someone's carrying and someone doesn't know how to carry. And they're always yanking their pants up. Um, you can also go with like a stiff reinforced plastic. Uh, nylon belt, like a range belt. Um, and then there's also something that's kind of in between. What do they call these instructor belts? So this will go through your belt loops. Yeah, one of my my everyday uh, belt, it's a, it's a full grain leather. I mean, you can see how thick that is. Um, and then just an adjustable belt, uh, belt buckle so it can uh, fit regardless of what holster I'm carrying. Um, you know, the the instructor belts, that's kind of a dead giveaway that, hey, I got a gun. Um, just kind of is what it is, you know. And it's just it's just one of those things where kind of talk to the people that are carrying all the time, find out what works for them. Um, you know, like uh, Annie's belly band, dude, that's the coolest thing ever because she can wear it with so many different outfits, yeah. you know. And, like, when you're when you're wearing jeans and stuff, what I mean, what do you wear? Um, with jeans, so I, I just have really been a fan of this belly band. It's just like just sitting here talking. I'm like, oh yeah, I do have it on because it's so comfortable still. But, um, honestly with jeans, I've just been using my, my tier one concealed yeah. holster just because it sits right in front. It's right against my stomach and it still allows for some great movement. So 
I really, that's the one I've been going to lately. I do have one that I can carry on my hip too. It's a Glock that, that I use my belt with if I just want it on my hip for whatever reason, but depending on my shirt. Same holster. Yes. What? <laughs> yeah. You got the same one? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. It's simple. Well, it's funny. It's simple. Remember we were joking uh, when we uh, were getting everything started. Yeah. Fanny packs are coming back into fashion. This thing's over 20 years old. Mm -hmm. And now it's back in fashion. Now you can actually start wearing it again. So I'm going to make yeah. my own and start selling. I want to see it. Okay. I'm going to put some donuts on it. But um, I think those will be, I think those are awesome. You should show the inside of it and how it, your gun just. We'll get into that in, oh, okay. in okay. A, a deeper show. We'll, we'll actually draw <laughs> from it and all that stuff. But like some of the things that we need to, that people see all the time is like, hey, how do I keep my, how do I load my magazines and stuff? That's one thing that, oh man people struggle with a lot, especially with new guns. And I'm sure Aaron, you get it in the store all the time. You know, there's all kinds of accessories and stuff that, uh, that people can buy. Yeah. Loaders. I mean, yeah. Loaders galore. But yeah. yeah was, we'll, we'll, was that the Maglula that you had there? Yeah. This is a generic one that'll work for double stacks and single. Uh, yeah, there's a double stack mag loader works for nines, works for 40, works for 45, I believe. Um, but, uh, I mean, we could talk about accessories for hours. We could do a whole season on accessories. <laughs> Actually. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll talk more about those on some future episodes and, and all the accessories that you probably want to start stocking up on as you get more into the shooting sports. I'll, I'll tell you right now that you probably should uh, start looking at some type of illumination device for uh, your firearm, whether it's a handheld or a weapon-mounted light, because you need to identify your target. Make sure you have some type of medical kit. And then also <clears throat> make sure that um, you have a phone or something to call 911 or some way to communicate with people uh, mm -hmm. when bad things happen so that you can get a hold of the appropriate people. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, there's been a lot of great information on this episode, and you know, we're going to continue this discussion on our, on our next episode. And you know, We got the gun. We're getting the right gear. We're going to talk more about how to use the gear and how to uh, actually hit the target you're aiming at. And so we really hope you guys have enjoyed this episode and tell your friends about us. I, I know I've had people come into the shop saying, hey, saw you on TV, a lot of great information. The, the discussion that we have here continues on in the shop. So tell everyone about it. We hope to see you at the range when we're shooting. And remember, keep it shooting straight. Yeah.